All right, welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We continue with cricket, lovely cricket. Well, West Indies Pacer Shamar Joseph received a hero's welcome on arrival in his home country, Guyana, on Thursday evening. Joseph's family, members of the Guyana Cricket Board and enthusiastic supporters greeted him at the Chedi Jagon International Airport in Tamiri as they showered him with flowers and adulation following his heroic efforts on the Windies Test Tour of Australia. The 24-year-old Joseph took 7 for 68 in the second innings of the second test at the Gabba to inspire the Caribbean team to a famous eight-run win which leveled the series at one all and in the process gave West Indies their first test win in Australia for 27 years. On hand to witness the celebration of Joseph's achievements was sports editor for Newsroom Media in Guyana, Avinash Ramzan. He joins us now on Zoom. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Maria. Good afternoon to all listening, as well as Lance and um, Ricardo. I'm doing well on top of the world. Yeah, really happy to have you join us this afternoon. So talk to me because we could not be there yesterday. I would have loved to be there at the airport, but you were there. So break it down for us. What was the atmosphere like? I could tell you, Maria, if you were there and you didn't get goosebumps, then you have no emotions. It was a wonderful welcome home ceremony for Shamar Joseph and all the adulation and the love, as you mentioned, was there throughout, you know, from the time he got off the aircraft. In fact, when the aircraft was coming into the Tatimeri airport, his entire family and the population from Barakara, they were invited by the government of Guyana and the Guyana Cricket Board to witness that welcome home ceremony. And they were shouting, they were singing, Mari champion, Mari champion. And that really evoked a lot of emotions within persons who were there. And if you didn't shed a tear or if you didn't get goosebumps, then you had no emotions, really. Yeah, and you don't love cricket as much as you. Yep. Yeah. So you said the family was there, but give me some details. Like who exactly was there? And along with the guy on a cricket board, was the sports minister there? Was the prime minister there? Details. Good. So the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr., the Director of Sports, Steve Ninval, the President of the Guyana Cricket Board, Visundi Yal Singh, who happens to be a Director of CWI as well, they were there to receive Shamar and, of course, his family from Barakara. We have heard so much stories about Barakara and the whole unity and the camaraderie with the people uh, from Barakara was on show there, as you see on the screen here now. That's his brother lifting Shamar and Shamar's son, and that was as he exited the, the aircraft and was making his way to that uh, the, the ceremony itself. But um, wonderful atmosphere there as Shamar made his way. He seemed a bit tired and, and expectedly so, uh, having that long travel back from Australia. His parents, you know, they, they, they shed a few tears. And I think Shamar held it up well because of the fact what I noticed, he didn't look at them directly. You know, he was trying to be tough. He knew the emotions that surrounds his return. And, you know, he held it up well, but all in all, a wonderful ceremony, wonderful welcome back for a guy who left Guyana with lots of promise, lots of expectations. And you know what, Mariah? He came back as a superstar. Yeah, Avinash, you know, this is one of the things that we love about sport. Um, this is the kind of story that we live for, because um, a few months ago, Shamar Joseph would have never anticipated in his wildest dreams um, what has happened in the past weeks in, in, in Australia. And it is tremendous for him to embrace and being embraced by the Guyanese public in, in this way. Uh, what, in your opinion, was the, most, was the most moving part of yesterday's homecoming for him? I think for him is to be reunited with his children and his family. Um, as soon as he came off the aircraft and was making his way towards the, the area where the ceremony was held, the first thing he did was grab his son, you know, kissed him on the cheek, kissed the other one on the cheek as well. And that, for me, showed how much he missed his family and his children. He's a family man, of course. And um, you mentioned something, Lance, that probably he himself didn't believe the stage that he would have reached today. But I can tell you, in October 2022, I met this guy for the very first time playing in the inter-county competition, which is uh, used to select the Guyana team. 
and he played for the Select 11 in that competition. He couldn't make his, his own county team. He was a virtual unknown at the time. And you know what he told me in our very first interaction, when I make it. And he's been telling that to every single person he's met since then, when I make it. For some reason, Shamar Joseph had a vision that he's going to make it big. And that has been manifested here today. Yeah, I want to uh, get a comment from you as well about the, the Guyana president, Dr. Irfan Ali, because he clearly is a huge lover of sport. And there is something happening in Guyana for sure. We see the kind of um, atmosphere that is generated in CPL cricket in Guyana at the moment. And for the, the, the president of the country to be so invested in sport, I think it bodes well for the future of Guyanese sport. Well, the president uh, did play a game, uh, not competitively at, at any level, but, um, you know, in the community, he did play cricket. And I'm sure he would boast to say that he was probably the best batsman that never played uh, for Guyana or the West Indies. But um, he's a guy that is fascinated about sport, and he talks the, he just doesn't talk the talk, he walks the walk. And um, there has been investment at the community level. There, there is a ground enhancement initiative by the government, and it's really to on earth talent and bring talent to the, to the national level. And that has been working. Of course, we all know about the Barakara story. Uh, Shamar played in an area there, was born in an area that uh, not much facilities. He came to the coastland and he developed his cricket. So this, the, the whole trust by the government is to ensure that we can produce more Shamar Josephs. And, and that has to come from the, the top level. And the president, of course, has been leading the charge Immediately after that ceremony at the airport last night, he met with Shamar and his family and well wishes and members of the Guyana Cricket Board at a private dinner. And I'm, I'm sure uh, lots of things would have been said there in terms of support for Shamar. And I'm sure the government would uh, ensure that the trajectory that Shamar is on right now could only get higher. Yeah, you know, we've been discussing quite a lot this week about protecting our young fast bowlers across the region and specifically Shamar because of what he has done in Australia and what the expectations are going forward that he can deliver for West Indies cricket. Um, what have the discussions been like in, in Guyana um, relating to this topic and how he can be and should be protected? Well, a lot, of, a lot of people in Guyana would feel that, you know, he would fall prey to the T20 franchises. Kimar Roach did mention that he has to guard against the distractions, quote-unquote. And, and I'm sure that's the same message across the region. Uh, pe people would think, you know, Sh Shamar, we might lost him in, in, uh, lose him in test cricket. But he himself, I spoke to him last night as well, and just get a gauge from him exactly what's the mindset at the moment. And he is very much focused on test cricket for now. Um, and that contract, the West Indies retainer contract that he's received earlier this week, I think that's a step in the right direction to ensure that he's properly managed. The Minister of Sport did mention as well that it is important that he's guarded against the distractions and he's able to fulfill his potential, not just for Guyana, but of course for West Indies at the international level. Yeah, any more celebrations planned that you know of in the coming days? <laughs> Well, no, nothing that we know of at the moment, but I'm sure uh, the people of Barakar would have their own little celebration, that, that wonderful village there that has given us a superstar. Yeah, and of course, um, he does have a toe injury, and uh, to travel all the way from Australia back to Guyana and then have the welcome home ceremony last night. Did you speak to him about how he was feeling, how the toe was feeling, and how it was coming on generally? But well, we're trying to get as much as we could from him, Ricardo, but we got a, about a minute and a half interview. We couldn't talk much. You know, the fans were there. They're trying to get photos. Uh, they're trying to get, you know, an autograph and all these things. Everybody was trying to get in Shamar's direction. But I can tell you, this guy is tough. Um, he wants to perform. He has a mission to be that superstar. And, you know, the minister said as well, he's got to be obsessed with greatness. And I think Shamar has already taken on that mantle. He wants to be obsessed with greatness. He wants to achieve great things in his career. Even uh, for the people of Barakar, he wants to put that uh, community on the map. And he's done a fantastic job in doing that. And it's all because of his mental toughness, his physical toughness. He's a fit guy. And he's showed the world what the people of Barakar can really do. Yeah, and can you give us um, a summary of what Shamar had to say, his own address, um, to those in attendance last night? 
Well, he just said that he was he was glad to be back home. Um, it was very, 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 very brief speech. Um, he was glad to be back home and to be reunited with his family and the rest of Guyana. And, you know, he was very excited to be part of that Test Series win, uh, the, the draw, sorry, and the, the victory in <laughs> that worry, final it test. It seems like a win. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> even realize when you said it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he was glad to be back home and to be reunited with his family. Of course, this is um, his first uh, major tour and, and major time away from his family. So it's uh, something that he was eager to get back home and be part of the celebration back home as well. Yeah, I also want to get your thoughts quickly. We, we had a chat with Ian Bishop on Tuesday, was it? Or was it Wednesday? Yeah. Earlier this week. Um, and he mentioned a young fast bowler um, in Guyana as well. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name as I speak to you. Um, Silas Tindall. Yes. Silas Tindall. Yes. And I wanted yeah. to... Um, know if you knew much about him or what you can tell us about that young man because Bish seems to think he has some quality and deserves some level of assistance. Yeah, he has been around for quite some time. He's from the same county area as Shomar Joseph, as Romario Shepard. Um, he's a wonderful young talent. Um, there was the Guyana Harpy Eagles matches that were held recently to select the team. He was part of one of the squads. Um, However, he picked up an injury and could not um, uh, showcase his skill. But he's one for the future for sure. And with good management, I'm sure that he could go on to achieve a lot of great things for Guyana and for West Indies cricket. Um, some would say that he's down the pecking order because of the, the availability of the senior guys. But um, once he's given that opportunity to hone his skills, he's certainly one for the future. Yeah, and I guess we run the risk of always looking for the next Shamar Joseph now, um, the yes. next diamond <laughs> in the rough. But um, if this kid could be it, then maybe there needs to be some level of intervention, get him fit, get him healthy, and let's see what he's able to deliver. Yeah, we saw what Shamar did in Australia there, and that really revived West Indies cricket on so many levels. You know, people are becoming passionate again about West Indies cricket. In Guyana here, for example, you know, Everybody, every single body, from the youngest child to the oldest man, is talking about Shamar Joseph. And, you know, years down the line, we could see so many young Shamars coming out of Guyana. Yeah, a lot of things to celebrate in Guyana. I spoke to the GCB Cricket Operations Officer, Anthony Dian Rad, and I was telling him, I need to make a trip to Guyana soon because I need yeah. to see what <laughs> y'all are feeding these cricketers because things have been looking really up, Avinash. Yeah, and, and talking about feeding the players, if you notice, and I mean, the world has noticed how fit Shamar is. And it's important that from here on, he doesn't get carried away. Yeah. Continue to work on his fitness and continue to eat the stuff that he has been eating. Of course, Barakara is a farming community and these guys eat healthy. You don't want a situation where you lax with your fitness and then it affects your game. Yeah. Um, we know all the troubles we have with players across the region not being fit. Shamar Joseph consistently has done over 40, late 40s, sometime uh, early 50s on the yo-yo test. He's extremely fit, and one would just hope that he continues along this path, continue to train and continue to eat and look after his nutrition. And we know very well that he's going to be invited to a lot of fancy dinners in the next <laughs> few weeks and months. So, yeah, that is very good advice. Avinash. Yeah. We, we, yes, go ahead. Yeah, we want to thank you so much for stopping by on the sports no So and Keep up the good work, and we'll talk again really soon. Thank you very much for having me. Take care. Lance, quickly, were you in Jamaica in 2008? No, I wasn't. No, you not, weren't. Not during the Olympics, obviously. So what is happening here with <laughs> Shamar <laughs> Joseph, right? Yes. Reminds me of 2008. Yes. Yes. Why am I asking if you were in Jamaica? Of course you were not. You were in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I was <laughs> home in November, though. Yeah. I yeah. was home in November, but, yeah. But it reminds me of what it was like in Jamaica yes. when the black, green and gold dominated at the Beijing Olympic Games with Usain Bolt and um, Shelly Ann. Shelly Ann Fraser Price and Malia Walker. Walker and Veronica Campbell Brown and the four by one team. And what I am seeing, yeah. and I've spoke about it just now, about the, the reaction and everyone in Guyana passionate again about the game. Yes. Yes. And that's that's the general feeling right across the Caribbean. Yeah. The, everybody's asking about Shamar, Ho, Shamar Joseph. Yes. Everybody wants to now see um, West Indies cricket again. Yeah, well, cricket needs a story like this. Yes. Given what has happened in West Indies cricket, West Indies in, the past, cricket. West Indies cricket in the yes. past three decades, Caribbean cricket needs a story like this. And yeah. a player and, like Shamar. Yeah, I, you know, I, I just think that it should trigger 
a, a sort of rise in the yes. interest and appetite yes. for, for the game. We don't want 12.01 to come too quickly, though. 12.01? Yes. Or is it midnight? <laughs> you didn't watch the Cinderella storyline. <laughs> we we have to take a break for that one. Ricardo and his jokes deserve a break. We'll be you, right back. You Stay just with didn't us. Get it. <laughs>